Hi, I'm Kathy Stark. In this lesson, we cover the last two conic sections, ellipses and hyperbolas. Let's begin with an ellipse. By definition, an ellipse is a set of all points in a plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points are, is always the same. The two fixed points are called foci. Here's a picture using the definition. In the picture, F prime and F are the foci, and all the points on this oval form the ellipse. They are points, for example here, such that the distance from this point to F plus the distance from this point to F prime is a fixed number, the same number as if I picked a point here and added the distance from F prime to F, or here, or here, or anywhere on the ellipse. We want to put an ellipse in a coordinate system so that we can work with it. Here's what we do. Here are two pictures of ellipses. The first ellipse, we say, has a horizontal major axis. Its long axis is horizontal. The equation of this kind of an ellipse is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. The center of the ellipse is 0, 0. A and B are as follows. A is half the major axis, and B is half the minor or short axis. The second ellipse is an ellipse that has a vertical major axis. That means its long axis is vertical. Its equation is y squared over a squared and x squared over b squared. The thing that's different in the two equations is the major axis is half the major axis squared is under y in the second case. Half the major axis squared is under x. In other words, the larger denominator indicates the direction of the major axis. Big denominator under x, horizontal major axis, big denominator under y, vertical major axis. Let's use those two pictures and work an example and come up with a graph of an ellipse. Here's what we have. We want to graph this ellipse by hand, matching it with one of the two in the previous picture. And then we're going to state the domain and range. What we're going to do is take this equation and put it in the form of one of the other two. What we need to do is divide each part of the equation by 54. Simplifying, I end up with x squared over 6 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. This is in the form of the second equation from the previous picture. In other words, we're going to have a vertical major axis for our ellipse. In addition, in addition to that, I need to identify a and b, and then I can sketch a graph. A squared in our problem is 9, the number that is larger, the denominator that's larger. So A is going to be the number 3. B squared is 6, so B is going to be the square root of 6. Since we're going to try to draw a graph for the square root of 6, we need to use approximately 2.4. To draw a graph, what we're going to do is locate or start with the center of the ellipse, count A units up and down, in this case three units, because A was three, and B units left and right, which was about 2.4. Remember it had a vertical long axis, and sketch in the graph of that ellipse. We've also been asked to write down the domain and range for this ellipse. Let's do that using the graph. The domain is the x's that are covered from left to right. Remember that this point was negative the square root of 6, and the right was positive. So the domain is from negative square root 6 to positive square root 6, including those. The range is the y values covered from bottom to top. As you can see in the picture, that's from negative 3 to 3. We also want to consider ellipses that do not have their center at the origin. 
Here's how the original equations can be manipulated to translate their centers from the origin. The equations are almost the same. This top one has horizontal major axis because the large denominator A is under X. The lower one, vertical major axis, the large denominator is under Y. If we put together the H and K, the coordinates or numbers that are by X and Y, they form the center in each of the equations, the center of the ellipse. Let's work another example using these equations. Here's what we're going to do. Graph the ellipse given by hand, state the domain and range, and then I'll show how to use a, a calculator to come up with the graph. For this particular equation, before I come up with the graph, let's identify the center. The center has an x and a y coordinate. The x coordinate is 1, the number subtracted from x. The y coordinate of this ellipse is negative 3, which is the number subtracted from y. Because the large denominator is under y, it has a vertical major axis. A squared is 25, the larger denominator, so A is 5. B squared is 9, the other denominator, so B is 3. To sketch a graph, let's start by locating the center at 1, negative 3. Count out A units up and down because of the vertical major axis. That's 5 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. And 3 units, 1, 2, 3 left and right of the center and sketch a graph of the ellipse. Let's check, well actually before we do that we do need to write down the domain and range. Let's write down the domain. Remember that's the x's that are covered from left to right. In this case from negative 2 to positive 4. The range is the y values covered from bottom to top. This was negative 3, and we went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units below that. The lowest value in the range is negative 8. The highest value, positive 2. We want to check this, or support this work, using a graphing calculator. What we need to do is take the original equation and solve for y. Let's see what we need to do. The first thing I'm going to do is subtract the x minus 1 squared over 9 term from both sides of the equation. That leaves me y plus 3 squared over 25 is 1 minus x minus 1 squared over 9. I'm going to multiply by 25 to get 25 minus 25 times x minus 1 squared over 9 take the square root of both sides as, as you've done before you know that you need to introduce a plus or minus when that happens so I have that all inside the radical and finally subtract 3 now I'm gonna put the minus 3 out in front of the plus or minus so that it doesn't get included in the radical by accident on our graph and calculator now we need to put two functions in. The first is negative 3 plus this radical. The second is negative 3 minus this radical. Let's see how that looks. Going to a calculator, negative 3 plus the square root of 25 minus 25 times x minus 1 squared divided by 9, and I'll close the parentheses for the radical. As a second function, negative 3 minus the square root of 25 minus 25 times x minus 1 squared divided by 9. And I need to close for the radical, and I think I'm missing an extra parenthesis on my top one. Remember that the TI-83 when you choose a radical, automatically puts a parenthesis in. So I have extras, but at least enough. To set a decent window, recall, that, recall our domain and range, and let's use negative 3 to 5 for the x values, and for y min and y max, 
negative 9 to 3.